In this video, we're going to be looking at trigonometric equations with domain restrictions. So when I mean trigonometric equations, I'm talking firstly about equations. So that's when they have an equal sign. So we'll have a left-hand side is equal to a right-hand side. And then with trigonometric, so as a trigonometric function, it's so either sine, uh, cos, uh, tan at the moment, only those three. So if we have, let's say, 2 sine x is equal to 3. That could be a trigonometric equation. So we have trigonometric functions, or there could even be two, and then they have equal signs of equations. And then we're going to look at how to do ones by hand. Otherwise, if they're on your um, calculator, then it's easier. You can put them in, like solve the typical what you do for equations with the right-hand side, left-hand side, depending on the calculator, solve for what function you want. And then you also put any other domain restrictions that you want. So we begin by saying, what does sine pi on 6 equal? Well, sine pi on 6 equals a half. That's because sine pi on 6 is equal to 30 degrees, and they're one of the exact values you should know. You can remember that from the triangle or just general memorization. So what about sine 5 pi on 6? Well, 5 pi on 6 goes around like that. So we have 5 pi on 6, and that means the angle with the x-axis is pi on 6. Because it's in the second quadrant and talking about pi, it's positive, so it also equals a half. You can also think about sine 5 pi on 6 is equal to sine pi minus pi on 6. And that's another way, it's a numerical way of expressing graphically what I was doing up there. And then you can say, well, that is equal to the angle that it's equivalent to. So we have sine 5 pi on 6 is equal to a half. So we had those two values. So that's all good. But what about if I now said that sine x is equal to a half? Well, does x equal pi on 6 or 5 pi on 6? Well, it can equal both because both satisfy this equation. But that may not be the only case because what about if we had... 2 pi plus pi on 6, if x is equal to that. Because with 2 pi, we've gone around the whole way, and then we've added pi on 6. And we know that sine 2 pi plus pi on 6, which will give us 13 pi on 6, and you can check this with your calculator, is also equal to positive a half. So we're going to look at ones with domain restrictions. However, note there are, with these trigonometric equations, with x, when you solve x, there's often multiple values that x can take. So we'll look at the example that sine that cos x is equal to root 2 on 2, x is between 0 and 2 pi. So the first thing is, what is the standard for x if x is between 0 and 90? So this is if x is in the first quadrant, and that is, it's going to be in the first, there will be a value in the first quadrant as it's positive. And if we look at this, cos is positive in the first quadrant, and it's positive in the fourth quadrant. So cos, root 2 on 2, so cos 45 degrees is equal to root 2 on 2. So we know that x is equal to, uh, what's that? actually that's a good thing, that's actually 45, so you shouldn't write 45 degrees there. So the reason why you can't write 45 degrees, because normally you could write radians or degrees, but here we have the restriction, and that is of, that's in terms of radians, and it doesn't have the degree sign, so we need to have our answer also in radians. And generally with these questions, it's also better to use radians as well. So we have pi on 4, so because pi on 4 is equal to root 2 on 2. That, and then we have to keep on going to 2 pi and see if there are any others. So there's not going to be any solutions in the second or third quadrant, and that's because cos is negative in the second, and cos is negative in the third. So cos um, pi on 2 plus pi on 4, or pi minus pi on 4, so cos 3 pi on 4 is also equal to root 2 on 2, but it's equal to negative root 2 on 2. So we're not talking about the magnitude, we're talking about the exact value here. So 3 pi on 4 isn't a solution. Then we go on the fourth quadrant, and we know that cos negative pi on 4 is equal to root 2. And it's important to note that with cos and sine, 
and tan, that they're positive and negative in different quadrants. So it's important to realize what they're talking about, like if cos or sine, work out which one, quadrants you want to look at. So therefore we've got the two solutions, but negative pi and 4 is outside of this range, 0 to 2 pi. So what's negative pi and 4 equivalent to? Well, negative pi and 4 brought us down here. So that was negative pi and 4. But we want to get to the same point, but we only want positive values. So we start at 0. We can go to pi and 4, which we've already done. Then we keep on going. Can't have any of the negative values. And then we reach this point here. So this is going to be 2 pi minus pi on 4. So this will give us 7 pi on 4. So therefore, x is equal to pi on 4. And also x is equal to 7 pi on 4. So in, know that there are no x values that satisfy this that are less than pi on 4 because those are just going to be here, which aren't the case because we've already got a solution for the first quadrant. Then are there going to be any values greater than 2 pi? Um, well, it can't be greater than 2 pi, but greater than 7 pi on 4, but still within this range? Well, no, as we've already looked at the fourth quadrant. So we always with these questions, be mindful if they do give a domain, then look at the domain, make sure there aren't any solutions that are in the domain that you haven't looked at, and make sure that all your solutions are within the domain, such as this negative pi and 4. You can convert that into a positive number, which you would have to do that then. So another question is, 2 sine 2x is equal to negative root 3 x is between negative pi and pi. So once again, you look at the domain. So we have negative pi and pi. But the first thing we want to do with this is rearrange it so we have sine something is equal to another result. So that means we put 2 on the other side. So 2x is equal to negative root 3 on 2. Now, the difference between the previous one and this one is that this now has 2x and before we just had x. So what I do is I just let a equal to 2x. Then sine a is equal to negative root 3 on 2. And then we solve this question as normal. And then we sub a is equal to 2x at the end. So sine a is equal to negative root 3 on 2. So what quadrants are we looking at? Well, sine has to be negative. So we're looking at the fourth quadrant and the third quadrant. Then root 3 on 2 for sine, that is equal to 30 degrees or pi. Wait, no, root 3 on 2 is equal to 60 degrees, or pi on 3. So we know that if it was in the first quadrant, it would be sine pi on 3 is equal to negative, is equal to positive root 3 on 2. But we want negative, so we don't want pi on 3. But we do want pi on 3 to be here, and pi on 3 to be here. So we want the values sine pi plus pi on 3, and then we want sine 2 pi minus pi on 3. But these are the positive value, or the values taken all the way along. But if you look at the main, they want negative pi to pi. So they want you to go from the positive all the way along, or they want you to go from here and then take you the negative all the way to the same point. So the two values we want uh, firstly, sine negative pi on 3, which will give us negative root 3 on 2. And then also, we want this value here as a negative number. So we're going from here, we're going all the way down, and we want to reach that point here. So that's going to be pi minus, sorry, um, negative pi plus pi on 3. So it's negative pi because it's negative all pi all the way there, and then you're adding whatever this theta is. And theta, we've decided, we've worked out is pi on 3. So this will be give us negative 2 pi on 3, which will also give us the solution, and both are within this domain. Therefore, a is equal to negative pi on 3 and negative 2 pi on 3. However, we want to get the solution with regards to x. So then we know that a is equal to 2x, so we just sub that in. So we say that 2x is equal to negative pi on 3, 
and negative 2 pi on 3. Divide both sides by 2, therefore we get x is equal to negative pi on 6 and negative 4 pi on 6. You can simplify this, so we get negative pi on 6 and negative 2 pi on 3. So with these questions, uh, look at what if it's sine or if it's cos, if it's negative or if it's positive, and work out what quadrants you're looking at. Look at what the standard theta value you want to find is. So the theta value for this one was a pi on 6, uh, pi on 3, sorry, so pi on 3. However, on the one before it was cos x is equal to that, so it was pi on 4. So you get this standard value, then you look at, at what values in this domain range can you reach the certain solution, as I did with that circle there.